I don't cry. I'm not, I don't usually cry at all. And I felt my, someone was pushing at my chest. Because Hi and welcome back. Again, I'm so excited for us to be on I Have Been Meaning to Ask. And today my guests are some phenomenal people. You'll come to agree with me in a few minutes. Help me welcome Pastor Pete and Julie Karaoke. These people are amazing. I'm talking about young people who the Lord is using for something great. You will watch this today and someone's life is going to be changed. Someone's destiny is about to be transformed. Karibuni sana. Thank Thank you. So good to see you. And you guys are looking lovely, man. What's Thank this? you. Are you coming Thank for a you. photo shoot or what's this about? Yeah. It's your set, wow. Pastor Don. Wow, wow. I think that he called us young people. I'm, there, uh, I'm like, yeah, well, come forever. Yeah, forever young. The youth forever young. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't show Pastor Pete's uh, top of his head. No, I, 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 I tried to deal with it before uh, I came. Oh, he's, he's good. <laughs> he's good. He's good. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to say he's fine. So, <laughs> that's for you to say. All okay. right. Excellent, guys. Thank you so much for uh, accepting the invite to come on, on the bench. We wanted to come so bad. Oh, is that right? Oh, thank you. That's so... <laughs> such that's, an honor to sit yeah, here. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Guys, tell me about yourselves. There are people who are trying to figure out who you are Somali or Limpata Wapi. Yeah? Uh, and how can a Som have a name karaoke? Okay. Yeah. Where does this all begin? Wow. Um, Julie Karaoke is my name. I am married to this wonderful man, Pete Karaoke. Peter Karaoke, actually, is his actual name. Okay. We met in high school, 17 years old. Uh, there was something in his school, uh, a Bible challenge thing. Okay. And they had invited our school for the first time ever. Wow. So, context school his school was in Nairobi mine was in Moranga somewhere okay so Shag's people we are going to this school and he's very popular at that time was uh, being made school captain oh wow and uh we had a mutual friend called Joy and Joy was like hi this is Julie Julie this is Pete Peter and then just shook hands that was it and that's it we ended up winning the the Bible trivia our school our Shag school <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, and that was it. Were you that competing? Did... Were you competing? Yes, it was a competition. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. It had okay. big schools over there. Yeah. We were the only sh shule from Moranga. Yeah. But we ended up winning, and that was it. No butterflies, no fireworks, nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Do you do you remember the day? I remember the day. And the place. And I the remember hour. the place. I I still go back to school and and check out the place. Wow. I'm like this is a spot where you're. This met. is a spot yeah. where we when met. When you were both seventeen. Seventeen mm -hmm. in high school. Wow. Yeah, so um, of course many schools had come. Uh, I knew her friend, so I didn't know her. So you knew Joy? I knew her Joy. Uh -huh. So we were good buddies with Joy. And um, talked to her, and then she introduced me to Julie, and uh, hi, hi, my name is so and so. And uh, that was it. And uh, I can't even remember the one. I, I, I can't remember. Wait, wait, you didn't remember because you were smitten or? No. It was it, just, it, it, yeah, it was. The day just went it on. It was another school. Did you care, did, did, is there anything that told you uh, I'd like to get to know her? No. No? Nothing? No. So you just met her like you met many other people that yeah. day? Okay. Yeah. But you remember meeting him on that Yeah, day. on that day, of course. Uh, but you see, even for me, so I did, made this vow in high school not to date. So. That was never anything in my head. Okay. And then also, him being school captain was very popular in his school. Mm -hmm. So even the thought that I could even be anything yeah. in his life was even a zero. So you, were just, you were just glad you met the school captain? Yeah, and I met so many other guys, like yeah. the CU, the whole CU guys, like yeah. the whole team. Yeah. So it, he was just among the guys I met. Okay. But now, that was in, um, do you remember, it was second term? Yeah. So we met in December. You guys even remember that term? It was second wow. term, yes. She, she, I'm she good remember. with days, yeah. yeah. So yeah. we met now in youth camp in December. Okay. Of same year. Same year. Same year. Okay. And now that's when something started. Yeah. So okay, again, our school, we had like three representatives. The school had a whole battalion. Yeah. There were all these other girls from all these other schools, yeah. some other boys from all the schools. But even just from the day one, um, I remember he had sat behind me and then they were saying, turn to your neighbor, give them a hug, welcome them to the camp. I'd never hugged boys at that point. 
Yeah, uh, it came from a very spirit. <laughs> it's what? not spirit. It's, uh, it's what? It's a, a shamba. It was, no, cultured. It was. Uh, was it cultured or very strict? It was messed up, man. Uh, no, oh, right. no, 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 it was just like boys are the enemy. It no, came she from went. That she background. went to. She went to boarding school. Yeah. Girl class school when it's four. Class four. Wow. Yeah, so, I'd never so she got boys. used to being in a girls only school. Yeah. Throughout primary school, went to high school, again yeah. girls only. Wow. So you are deprived of boys. The first Adam yeah. she met. You are uh, it. <laughs> That's like, absolutely right. So <laughs> I, I had not interacted with boys at all. So yeah, we're being told to hug. I'm like, why are we hugging? This is so inappropriate, wow. you guys, you know. So me, I'm trying to shake my hands. <laughs> Pity had worn a blue jacket. He just came in for a hug. And I just remember thinking, Cry. Oh my God, I have <laughs> sinned. Over. I have sinned against you, Lord. <laughs> what is this? Yeah, what is so you're this? like, since what he's the first things? guy who has yeah. hugged me, I'm going to marry him. No, 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 no. It's not even an uh, idea, man. I yeah. just remember just feeling like, what an yeah. awkward moment this is. Yeah. 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 But now, then, now things, strange things started happening. Um, so that dinner, this First day, we are seated yeah. on a round table with guys mm. from his school and some of my friends from my school. Yeah. And we get into this argued uh, debate. Yeah. Yeah. It was very cold. It was in current, so I'd forgot my head uh, with a, uh, a, a shawl. Mm -hmm. And then someone mentioned that I'm Muslim there, and I was like, No, I'm not a Muslim. I'm a Christian. And then now he said, Quindi, there's a problem with Muslims. Wow. So I remember just thinking, what's your problem? Like, no, I've not said there's a problem with well, Muslims. I'm just, I'm not a Muslim. Okay, okay. <laughs> he was like, hey, you know, my mom is a Muslim. Uh, so I'm just thinking like, dude, nobody has said there's a problem with Muslims. So we get into this argument. Wow. So the rest of the people, like 20 people are just looking at us like, so you guys started fighting before you got married? I think so. I like that. Yeah, so to yeah. Like, can I, we even have a picture I'll, I'll share impression. with you of that day. No. That yeah. day, there's a photo. We have it. Yeah. We have a picture. I don't yeah. know who took the picture. Yeah. But, but it's there. we started off uh, going at each other. That was the yeah. you know when you first <laughs> when people bicker first impression. It's, it's usually a sign that you yeah. probably belong together. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, it's so true. That I think that he went home yeah. uh, to his dorm yeah. and whatever he mm. was thinking like, who is that girl? Like because I was yeah. not relenting. I yeah. was like like this. And yeah. even him, I went You're thinking intrigued. like, what was that guy picking on me? Like yeah. it was just a normal discussion, but he mm. took it so personal. Yeah. Yeah, and then I started chatting. I remember one time we were seated on a staircase somewhere and one of the leaders from that youth camp was like, you guys need to go to bed. It's 2 a.m. And I, we were so shocked because we didn't even know it was 2 a.m. Wow. So you were chatting, the two of you? Yes. Everyone somewhere was asleep. on a bench somewhere? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that's when we just started and then he used to play Did you like her? At that, at that point, were you even feeling any, anything for her? So, so I got, I started getting intrigued just from that conversation at the table. Yeah. And um, I kept I kept wondering who is this girl that's extremely firm mm. and strong willed. Yeah. 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 I, I came to realize later it's something I like. Wow. I didn't know I liked it. Wow. Then, you know. I'm yeah. like Chick is so you, you like strong women, is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, he has a pain. There's a thing for strong women. <laughs> Take note. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so I was like, intimidated by strong personality. Yeah, I'm like, I, 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 I like this. I mm -hmm. really like this. Okay. So, okay. so of course, the conversations ended up happening after that. Mm. Um, then now she, she softened up. Yeah. And started telling me about her school, mm. her challenges in school with certain subjects, um, and I offered help. Mm. And I took her through a couple of things, and that's what kept us talking till maybe two a.m. Wow. Yeah, because she was like, yeah. I'm, I'm struggling in this, I'm struggling. Hey, let me tell you, Don, if you find a girl who's telling you what she's struggling in, mm. everything in you wants to be a superhero. Yeah. You know? Even if you didn't understand it, <laughs> you have to if, go figure yeah, it out if, first and then come help. If yeah. you don't understand, yeah. Jack. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, we'll, yeah. look. So, all right. Great. Fast forward mm -hmm. to you guys have graduated yes. yeah you've come yeah. out now into the world mm -hmm. mm. you're still talking you're friends yes. you're you're not dating yet no. right mm. so at what point did you feel okay i think this might work it, it took a long time because the thing the thing about the spaces we grew up in i remember one of the things that was said strongly is you don't don't date when you're young yeah so we're having all these feelings mm. and all these butterflies but we have 
something hanging on us saying, you know, our leaders were telling us, you can't, you can't, you shouldn't, you shouldn't. It felt like yeah. a scene so to it felt, like it someone. It felt like it was a wrong thing to do. Yeah. Okay. So it was under wraps, it yeah. was undercover. Uh, let me tell you, the worst thing was to bump into some of our leaders while on a date. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'm like, shucks. When, when you talk about leaders, what are you talking about? Is this church, church setting? Leaders. Or is that, okay, so yeah, church, church okay. So yeah. after Form 4, we joined mm -hmm. an ex-candidate program. Okay. It was a one-year school of ministry. Okay. That place really established who we are. Actually, who we are right now is because of that wow. one year. Wow. So I even encourage people whose kids are almost done with high school, if they have that gap, yeah. it's good to plug, plug them in such a program. Okay. But that's when we started liking each other. Okay. So for me, where I felt the two fireworks is mm -hmm. one day we are meeting with the girls in that class and everyone was just saying their own stories and I realized none of these people know this and this about Pete, none of these people, they hung out with him but he's, I'm the only one he's told about his parents, his mm -hmm. sister, his background and I started feeling, okay, I think I have some exclusive information here. You felt special. I felt special because mm -hmm. it's like none of these guys have this information and then now for him, then another incident we went to Eldoret for ministry. Okay. So we were preaching in the bus and then... How, how old were you at this time? 18, 19? 19. 19. 19. 19. You yeah. were preaching in the bus. Oh, yeah. Mm. Keep going. Oh, yes. <laughs> so <laughs> to, to my FKLD, no, in Eldoret. No, I, I just don't want to tell you what I was doing when I was 19. <laughs> right? You guys were preaching on no, the yeah, bus. No, yeah, ministry, well yeah. yeah. So we, we were in, in Eldoret mm -hmm. and at this point, so I'd sat next to... Uh, a friend of mine, the whole journey there, and I remember I slept the whole journey. When we were about to get to Eldoret is when I got a chance to sit next to him because guys are now moving around the bus. Yeah. And then he told me he wanted to become a pilot, you know, such things. And then now we got there. When we got there, there's something he told me one of those days. Actually, he was offering to clean my shoes because we were walking very long distances. Wow. And I'm like, you know me again, Miss Independent. I don't like boys. I can do it for myself. Yeah. He's like, I want to wipe your shoes. And I'm like, what in the... So and Kampatia, and then there's some. And then you kept insisting that you could see a glow. I will explain to Don what you yeah. saw that day. Jesus, you leave Don hey. Hey. questions. Why are you no, it's because I don't have to say it. Well for done. You. Please tell us. And questions. I think that's the day for him that he was like, okay. Shoe cleaner, tell us <laughs> what glow were you seeing? <laughs> wow. <laughs> so it's interesting because we're in this camp. Um, we're ministering, we're going around, we're in crusades, we're mm. carrying equipment, mm -hmm. stuff we were doing at 19. I, I, and I thank God because those things grounded us. Absolutely. Um, and, and became radical for God. And so um, we're here, we're going around, and I'm asking her all these things. And one day I just realized there's just a glow on her. Yeah. I can't explain it, but yeah. she just looked brighter. Yeah. She looked beautiful. You know, that's, looked... that's how every man feels when they fall in love. The person you look at. Yeah, it's like there's a key hello effect. Aura. Yeah, yes, there's, a, absolutely, yeah. there's this thing on their head <laughs> and you're wondering, They're is everyone angel. seeing what I'm seeing? <laughs> <laughs> Thank God no one will see you. are in love. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and I was like, there's something about you today. Yeah. You look different. Yeah. And she's like, I've not done anything different. I'm like, I'm seeing something different. Wow. And I think the scales were falling off of my eyes. Absolutely. And I was like, aha. Well done. Uh, this thing is happening, man. So, okay. so again, late night's conversation. Trip back to Nairobi felt like 30 minutes. Wow. Because we were chatting. You before. had too much to talk we about. We had too much to talk about. Yeah. You know? And then because you feel almost restricted to spend time, yes. the time you're allowed to spend time, you want to... You want to you suck all of this, right? suck yeah. all the honey out of that wow. moment. So, wow. so, so that's where our friendship started. Yeah. Okay. Okay. After that, now of course, grew up a bit. Had to make our own decisions. She went to the U.S. Um, I wasn't sure if, uh, if if we'll still be together, but we made a commitment to still be together. Um, and after two years, she came back. Um, then after that, we planned to get married, and we got married in 2014. 2014. But that was seven years since That's a seven event. year summary. You know, I like men. They go <laughs> yeah. straight for yes, it. This yes, is what happened yes. and we got married. Yes. So you yes. all knew each other for how long? As of today, how many how many years have you known each other from the time you were 17? It's probably 17 years. Another 17 years. Mm. Wow. We've known each other for 17 years. That's amazing. Mm. And married now for how many? Uh, heading on to 10. Yes. We're not mm. 10th year actually. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. Any regrets? Gosh. No. <laughs> the pause. <laughs> the inhaling. Yeah. <laughs> so you, so you don't ask the questions. Right? You, do you want to take it? <laughs> 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 no, 
<laughs> you guys are still bickering, obviously, after 34 no, years. No regrets. Still, yeah. No regrets. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think one of the things that happens sometimes when you get married, because we were young when we got married, mm -hmm. is, and we've talked about this, yes. there are things you, you, you know much later in life, mm -hmm. or a bit later, mm -hmm. and nothing wrong with it, so there's no regret. Yeah. Um, there's a part of me that sometimes wishes that you can know a lot more stuff earlier on, mm. you know, because um, sometimes, granted, immaturity here, lack of information there, lack of exposure there, tends to prolong certain experiences. Mm. And so if you were, if wisdom came a bit earlier, yeah. information, knowledge, yeah. Yeah. I think we'll probably, you'd probably be farther, Absolutely. you know, in terms of decision, life and stuff like that. So that's yeah. the only place, yeah. zero regrets. Yeah. I love her more today than I did you know, when we got married, yeah. it gets better, everything gets better, yeah. uh, friendship grows, love yeah. grows, and yeah. um, I just love being with her. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Julie, yeah. any regrets? <laughs> no regrets whatsoever, but like you said, life, life can life at you, you know, like, mm. so such, such things, those, sometimes they make you even question yourself, mm. and was it the right choice, uh, should we have delayed getting married, should we have decided to have kids, should we, you know, because now sometimes I feel like life started penetrating inside our relationship. Mm. And yeah, so it's a, not a regret, but life has just not been 100% fair, if okay. I can put it that way. Yeah. So some of those things that have, those are the things that had made me start questioning, were we supposed even to be together in the first place? Because why is life so unfair? To and, us. and bundle that for a minute. What do you mean unfair? You know, if anyone looks at their lives, yeah, yeah. they probably get to the place where they're feeling mm, something is not fair. Yeah. Is it because of an unmet expectations of any kind, or is it something that we build in our minds? We think yeah. life should play out like this, and yeah. then it doesn't play out like that. I think it's that. Um, I think the picture I had when we were getting married would was an image of ease. I thought it would be very easy. Okay. Um, we were married, we, you know, we've dated seven years, it was hard, and I was like, you know, now eventually we are married, you know, we are serving God, God will dish out everything for us. <laughs> like they still set a, set a table for us and be like, you know, my children yeah. indulge, you know. Yeah. And then you can realize very fast that that's actually it's not like the that. opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so those are the moments I was just like, God, where are you in all this? It's not making sense. I feel like people are laughing at us. I, yeah, so coming into the marriage, I thought it would be very easy. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I thought any decision needed to make would be like this. You know, the jobs would be easy to get, the children would be easy to get, the, the contracts, the whatever, the opportunities, the travel. I thought everything would be so easy. And then, where? It's adulting. Where? Yeah, right? It's adulting. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know what? I think that's one thing I was not prepared for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. I was prepared for, for everything in life, but I think the adulting, the hard beat of it, um, yeah. yeah, it still catches me by surprise. Yeah, sometimes, mm. sometimes we're never quite yeah. ready for those, for yeah. those moments, yeah. right? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yeah. Wow, mm. excellent. Yeah. So you said earlier he was planning to become a pilot, so what happened? Mm. A lot of things happened mm. along the way. Um, passions do change in life, focus changes, and I, I quickly realized that I have a very clear path for ministry. Mm. Um, and uh, I, was trying to, I was trying to pacify it mm. with other things. And the moment I realized this is, this is the path that God has chosen for me was when I had an opportunity to join the aviation industry and I turned it down. Wow. Yeah, so wow. I completely turned it down. Wow. And they kept calling me to say, where are you? We're waiting for you. The job wow. is already yours. It's What's Monday, going on? We're waiting for you in the office. We're waiting for you in the office. Coming. And I wrote to them and I said, thank you so much for the opportunity. Yeah. I won't be joining you. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, and, and was, that, the, was that difficult? It was difficult because yeah. I've grown wanting this, this thing. Okay. Uh, I've applied. I've gotten these things. I've been trained. You know, and then you had even gone for training. I'd gone for training. And yeah. then and then at some point I'm like, I God, where are you taking me? And at that time in my life, I was to make a decision. One, a decision that would enhance our marriage. Yeah. Mm. Because we, it's around the same time we're getting married. Mm. And number two, a decision that would make 
ministry more impactful. Mm. So I had to choose a path that would enhance those two things. Mm. And so I had to make a decision and say, this is a path I'll take. If yeah. I was to take the other path, yeah. it would probably affect our marriage. Number yeah. two, my ministry or calling will probably have, would have suffered mm. a bit, mm. you know? So I made up my mind. I decided, let's do ministry. Let me get into this thing. And um, I knew it's the path that God had put ahead of me. Mm. And um, I jumped, I jumped into it completely. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Mm. What did you always want to be? A diplomat. All right. Yeah, but I, 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 I always see it. So there's this thing I made when I just joined as a freshman in college. I made this like a road sign and I wrote, single lady, I wrote Ambassador Julie Karyuki. Wow. I'm not married at that point. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just a freshman. So the Julie Karyuki part became a reality. I'm just waiting for the ambassador. Okay. It's going to happen. <laughs> But you knew he's the, he's the guy. That's why you said I, career. I, you know, I knew it. It was tough, but I just, yeah, I fought it. I did. Our journey is long. We fought. We broke up so many times. Yeah. But I just knew he was the man for me. Even the, even now in marriage, sometimes I look at him and I say, if I was ever married to another guy, I think Tunge Patana too bad. Oh, really? Yes, because oh, wow. of just the, I can't explain it, but there was just like a, a very strong magnetic <laughs> force. Force that sometimes I feel like I'm inside his body, he's inside, like it's just wow. really. I don't know what all. That is. <laughs> you know, okay, you know, please. No, I was. Let me tell you where I got. Let me tell you where I got stuck. I got stuck on, even Magnet. if I was married to someone else, Tunge Patana. To what does that mean? I don't know what it means, but I'm telling you that's what you I just, tell you. You just sense yeah, he I was do. the guy for you. He was, he was created for he, you. Wow. You know exactly that he was created for me and I was created for him. Okay, so this, this is in freshman year, this is in the U.S.? Yes. Where, where in the U.S. were you? Which, I started state? in Kentucky okay. and then I went to California. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you've left home, you've yes. gone there, yes. but you still believe this is the guy for you. Now, there was yes. a point, I know when people <laughs> flew out, I mean, that was it, like yeah. out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. Uh, the long distance thing doesn't, you know, usually yeah. work, mm. but deep down you knew he was the guy. All right, so you come back, you get married, mm -hmm. So the ambassador thing, mm -hmm. what's, where, where are we at on that? <laughs> we are so far, yet so near. So, mm. um, so I started my career very well, United Nations. Uh, I have a degree in international relations and mm, diplomacy. Uh -huh. So that's actually my background. And then now I got a job at UN, my first job, and I'm like, ah, this is the path. Then suddenly my contract ends. I apply for another place. I got another NGO still mm -hmm. uh, that works alongside with USAID. Mm -hmm. And then the contract ended and then I'm like, okay. What so, <laughs> yeah. yeah, now I found myself in real estate. I found myself in random jobs. And right now I'm like, <laughs> I'm in social media, digital marketing. Mm. And I'm like, but that's, that's, I just keep seeing myself in that car with the Kenyan flag. Really? Wow. I see it all the time. Wow. We, I see the chase cars in front of me yeah. all the time. So yeah. I just know one day. Yeah. Yeah. We look back at this video and we'll see. It. We will. It's yeah. gonna happen. We will. Yeah. At least the Julie Karyuki <laughs> part. <laughs> that one has come. Yeah, okay. ambassador well, on Shindo Kidogo. Yeah, but, you know. I was gonna say I have a few flags. We can just you know. <laughs> anyone on the car? Yeah, yeah, we can. No, me, I want to. The Gava. So how many children? We have four, <laughs> and but one has a different address. She's in heaven. Yes, mm. but uh, with, with us at home, we have three boys, okay. amazing boys. You guys have some cute kids. Thank you. I, mean, I look you. at your kids and I'm just like, you know what? Thank you. We should allow you guys to produce <laughs> children for the world, right? <laughs> but you all have some beautiful boys. Mm. My Thank goodness, you. those those guys are not handsome. They're beautiful. Oh, thank uh, God. But man, thank God. Let's talk about your daughter. Yes. Tell us where did it all start? What happened? <laughs> mm. So, uh, my wife said that when we got married, there's a way we were hoping life would unfold. And uh, part of that had a lot to do with at what point are we getting children? Um, you know, and you're like, yeah, 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 after year one, let's enjoy life, let's travel, mm -hmm. let's go get kids after that you know, um, and started off that way. Mm -hmm. Then, after year one, we're like, okay, children, Kumbe, this thing is, uh, doesn't work the way we thought it works, you know? Kumbe, they are not, uh, it's not instant. It's not automatic. It's not eh? automatic, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and went to year two, and I remember there's a time we went for a couple's retreat, the first couple's retreat, mm. 
um, at Lukenya. It was a church couples retreat, and I remember Don, you made an altar call. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're pulling me into this. All right, uh-huh. part you of this. Part story, of yeah. story. You made an altar call and asked. Yeah. You said, if you're here and you're married and you're struggling to have children, please stand. And then my wife stood. So I'm looking at her. I'm like. When did we agree we are having a problem? <laughs> when? <laughs> when did it become a struggle? When did you but become but a you struggle? had been trying by, by that time. We've been right? trying. Okay. Yeah. But there's a part of me that's extremely private. positive. Positive or private? Positive. Positive. Not okay. even private, yeah. Positive. positive. Like, yeah. yeah not like, by the time we cry wolf, or I cry wolf, yeah. it's, it, it's, it's not a wolf, it's a, real it's a deal. monster. Yeah. You know? Okay. <laughs> so when I see my wife standing, and of course, you know, when your wife stands, she can't stand alone. Can't stand alone. And you are sitting at the front, eh? <laughs> you know, so she's she was struggling alone. Yeah, yeah so yes. I, look, I look at her, I'm like, Jesus Why Christ. are you embarrassing me? <laughs> now everyone knows so now. Now you've announced eh? that we have wow. a problem. And wow. so, you know, the ones you stand pushing the chair, like I was so disgruntled. I'm like, ah, <laughs> ah. You know, let's stand. So we stand. <laughs> and you prayed, and my eyes were open the whole time. I was so upset. I'm like... I'm so bored. Like, I'm, yeah, so bored. I'm so yes, bored. This time I'm, next so, year, I'm, yes. like, I'm so bored. <laughs> and I know you can't remember this, or maybe you do. When we went for for the break, you guys had to come and counsel us privately. Wow. Because we were fight we were fighting seriously. Yeah. Because of that. Because yes. of that. Wow. And I kept telling her, what did you just do? Why did you What year was this? I don't I don't remember. 2015. 15 or something. 2015. Okay. 2015 or 2016. 2015, Ma Lukenya. Uh, 2015, we to look you know. Let's, let's so, trust her memory. She's, yes, she's good with details. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, the, the way she is in terms of responding to things quickly, I've come to appreciate till today. Wow. Because I, I, thought, I thought she was acting, over, over acting, or over reacting, or, 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 or being too emotional. Yeah. But now I appreciate. I actually wow. look out at her. If she's picked out on something, I tend to catch up on it quickly. Wow. And, we'll, and I'll share what, what that meant for us, even yeah. with the loss and everything, yeah. you know. So she stands up, so, so we fight. And you, you and Nancy come and you're trying to help us yeah. out. Like you are under a tree. Pete is upset. Oh. Like, I'm that like, number like, one, when did we agree we have a problem? Number two, now you've exposed Post us. us. Everybody knows Everyone now. knows uh. we are that couple struggling. We are struggling to get children. The struggling. Life, the hustlers for children. The, the ones who are struggling. Yeah. The ones who... <sighs> do it and it's not happening you know like <laughs> it's like I, <laughs> okay like i was <laughs> i was <laughs> upset i was like i was like wow. I'm, I'm never coming for another couple's retreat this is ever it. this, this is, is the last it. one wow <laughs> you'll be going alone and many men go through this yeah oh, yeah many yeah. men go through they it, go through right? it yeah you yeah. know so mm. so of course you guys calm us down and we go back to the sessions and i'm, I'm a bit more at ease now what i didn't realize was that my wife was crying for help mm-hmm. because she had all intuitively picked out that there's a problem. Wow. I had not picked it out. Wow. So after that, we went through journeys of seeking, you know, help from doctors, experts, and all those things. Tests, uh, tests very that were very crazy. Um, very uncomfortable. I don't, I, I, Yanni. Um, Even in that journey, we're praying for Yeah, we're praying for you, and we know God can do a mm. miracle, mm. you know. So, so eventually, I ended up appreciating her mm. response, mm. and her Im- immediate response is usually, "Can God help us first wow. before we look at everything else? Mm. Wow. Can God answer this that's, need that's fast?" Powerful. You know. Mm. That's powerful. So, so eventually, we end up getting our firstborn child, which yeah. was actually the next couple to retreat. I was six weeks pregnant. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So my, my, you know, this is what always happens, Don. I always get disgruntled with my wife. Then afterwards, I'm like, maybe thank you. Like, thank because you now there are couples who didn't stand up that time. Like, called thank us. you. <laughs> the next couple of streets, they stood up now. Uh, you see, so I'm like, oh, wow. maybe to get catch up on your time, you know? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Me, so me, my brother, God, I'm fast. You're you, quick. You know? Quite sensitive. But now when it's a marriage setting, now there's wisdom. Now I know what I did. Uh, I, I know how to do it differently now. Okay. Yeah, we'd have to be in a place where my husband and I are in agreement that now this is where we are at. We need to seek help. And if he's not very comfortable with us standing in front of everybody, mm. call them on the side and just say, pray for us. Mm. Yeah. I will tanika him like that. Yeah. 
<laughs> wow, amazing. So we get pregnant, mm -hmm. and then I make up my mind that I will never miss any clinic, yeah. clinic visit. Yes. And I was there every, those agonizing, long waiting hours yeah. <laughs> at the yeah. gyna. Yeah. I'm like, for real, for real, for real. Yeah. You know, you wait, you wait, you Even wait. Whole day. So my prayer was that our first baby will be a girl. That was my, my secret prayer. Mm. You know, I don't know if I'd shared with you. Yes. I'd shared. Yes. So we go week 20, 21. That's when you, when you confirm, yeah. you know, uh, the sex of the baby. And then we go to this doctor and it's like, ah, it's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, me, I knew it was a boy. Oh, I'd even written in my, my oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, my prayer. So, so when he confirms, I don't talk for the next two hours. Because, because of how upset you were. No, he wasn't upset. I was, just... I was in, in my own world. I'm like, what? Which as a woman, let me tell you, there's nothing as frustrating as that. Even Pete is the same person who, when you've tested for pregnancy and you've seen the double line, I hand it over to him, he goes quiet. That is just... That's how he deals with information? That's how I process. That's how you process. It, I, you I, go I, quiet. I, I'm, I'm an internal... I, I process Me, I'm the ones who hang on the chandelier like a monkey. I dance, <laughs> I, I jump. So, so you can imagine the, are you happy? Are you disappointed? Yeah, what's yeah. wrong with you? God has said, yeah. so I'm always like, so what's your problem? Wow. And, the, and the thing was, I didn't feel like I had it in me to raise boys. Why? Yes. Why? Mm. Why would you say that? Mm. I felt like there's a lot more required to bring up a boy. Than a girl? Yeah. So were you, is it that you felt I felt like I, I felt like I was ill-prepared Ill okay. to raise up a boy. Yeah. And maybe because of maybe my own experiences and my own gaps and my own um, uh, uh, things that I was going through, mm. I felt, hey, give me a girl, I'll, I'll raise a girl. It's yeah. easier. It's yeah. easier for me. Yeah. But a boy, I'm like, we're tied for life. This dude, this boy is identity will, issue. It's, I have it's to identity. Have it's, uh, it's, it's, it's raising things for them. It's inheritance. It's, inheritance. it's strength. It's, yeah. it's, I think there's a part of me that didn't want to take that path. Mm. Um, and so the two hours I was silent, I was thinking about all those things. Now, baby was still in my stomach. He's thinking about his inheritance. Oh. Yeah. And oh, you were thinking about him uh, inheriting. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking about all you those process things. This yeah, I'm like, okay. is there even an inheritance for you, <laughs> first of all? You know, like, <laughs> I, wait. So, so I'm thinking. Yeah. So, so when you think about it now, how would you describe that moment? Was it a necessary moment or is it something that everyone should be thinking through? I, 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 don't, I don't know if everyone should be thinking about it, but if you're pushed to think about it, think about it and process through it. Mm. Yeah? Mm. Um, I, I had to think about it. Mm. Right now, if I look back, I'm like, thank God I have a boy, I have boys, you know, mm. like there's, again, I think because it was so fresh and I had not voiced my concerns even to my wife, and, and, and I'm hoping that men can learn how to just voice your concerns, yeah, talk yeah, about them, yeah, you know? Um, yeah. And, you know, I think at that time I was like, I need to figure things out before, you know, before I make a move on anything. Mm. So now I'm cool, I'm easy, I accept it. I think I had two hours of just processing through it. Mm. Uh, it's a reality, I don't know if maybe the other people who think about it, maybe you can leave a comment and, and just share how you uh, process through it. But I, I, and to some men, it's the opposite they feel like they're not prepared to raise daughters. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. For me, it was boys. Yeah. It was like, bo boy, boy, as in, my <laughs> identity will be new, my, uh, uh, you know, they say, masculinity bestows masculinity. Mm. A, a woman cannot bestow masculinity to, she can try, but she can't yeah, fully. Yeah, to a boy child, that's not a And so, man. how these boys will turn out, mm. really, has a lot to do with my capacity to stay at a certain place as a man. Yet you ended up with three boys. <laughs> God, God has a lot of humor. God has God. <laughs> so so, so yeah. Zani gets born. Um, he does. Oh, the most handsome baby. I remember we, we, Pete, the moment he held him, he burst into tears. And I think that whole fear thing, from my point of view, at that point, I just saw it lift. Mm -hmm. And I just saw him now, like, I, I will love on you. I, yeah, I'm not scared. I'm a little bit scared anyway. Yeah. Like, yeah. but yeah. you're here, and you know, I'm gonna give you my best. Yeah. So he came, and uh, we were so excited. Yeah. 
gosh, you were above the moon. You know, that baby you had prayed for. You had mm -hmm. gone through a loss before that, actually. Mm -hmm. We had lost a pregnancy. We didn't know we were pregnant. Mm -hmm. uh, so this, then this, we went to a doctor and we were told we were actually going through a miscarriage. Mm -hmm. And then also he was um, that promised child. And even he, the way his name came, his dad was sleeping and God spoke this name to him. And, you know, just a lot of God moments around him. He was so waited for. We had three baby showers for him. Wow. Yes. Three, three wow. baby showers. I remember I had so much stuff. I would even have opened a shop and sold. I didn't buy a diaper for like almost two years. Wow. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. The anticipation of a child. People wanted him so hard. People waited for him. And he just opened this new world for us. And, you know, I was like, you know what? Tonga is a mwingene. Yeah, so we, we we are those people who wanted to just have children, then completely close that how many, chapter. How many, how many kids had you wanted to have? Initially, was it three? Yes, we wanted three. Uh, there's a point where between two and three, but mm -hmm. now we're stuck with three. Mm -hmm. And I just knew the order. I knew it was going to be a boy, girl, boy. I mm -hmm. knew that for sure. Mm -hmm. I, I'd even print, uh, printed a picture and put it. I usually have these vision boards. Yeah. Things I do. Yeah. So that was the image we had. So uh, when he was about one one year two months. I became pregnant again mm. um, and we are so happy we're excited and then Pete was away on work there was a pastor's no his co-workers I think all your, all your colleagues were down at Limuru at Brackenhurst and I tried to call him because that day I'd woken up and I was bleeding mm. and I'm eight weeks pregnant so I'm not able to reach him because he was the one actually speaking um, so mm. I call uh, one of the pastors and I was like if you can reach Pete right now tell him that's the time we were discussing going to new assemblies that was at wow. meeting at Brackenhurst. Wow. Mm. Yeah, so this well, this person tells him there's an emergency place called Julie and I'm telling him, babe, I'm bleeding, I'm on my way to the doctor, so we meet um, at the doctor's office. Mm. Uh, the doctor's so you, you rush out to go and yeah, tell mm -hmm. immediately. Mm -hmm. immediately, like he didn't even mm -hmm. think about it. Mm -hmm. So they started administering shots on me, I remember I was going for shots like two or three in a day and it was in CBD, so I'd leave my whole house, go to the doctor's office. They were dungaing me all these uh, shots, which are so painful, um, to just help the pregnancy. When you do the scan, the pregnancy was very intact, because um, the scan would be able to tell. So they suck. When you're about to have a miscarriage, this usually you can see there's some, the circle, the suck isn't very intact. Mm. You can be able to see there's a place where, you know, the, the circle is not too. So mine was completely intact and uh, very high up in the womb. So the doctor was like, it's not coming down at the cervix, so we are good. So just keep administering these shots. I don't know where the bleeding is coming from. It could be maybe there was a clot somewhere, you know. So sour. So I go back home. Next day, I go for the shots again. Hey, but now I'm just like, God, this is so painful. The way I'm feeling is not okay. So um, we call Pete's mom over to watch my son now. And he was crying. I think he could see I was in agony. Mm -hmm. And then now my body goes into full labor. I'm officially now in labor, <laughs> literally. At, at eight weeks. At eight weeks. Mm. So I'm rushed to, he rushes me to hospital. I'm screaming at the top of my lungs. Yeah. Um, at the hospital, they're treating me like a woman who's giving birth at 40 weeks. And I just tell them I'm actually eight weeks. So I'm throwing up. It was so bad. I was sweating. Um, the doctor is on the call now. He's like, do this. At this whole time, I, I can, the pregnancy is still there. You know, but I was bleeding, but now I've gone into labor. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I excuse myself and I go to the bathroom. And the bathroom is when I just felt the relief. So the fetus came out. In the bathroom. In the bathroom, and I saw it. And that's another story for another day. But the trauma of you have to flush the toilet, and you know that's a child, that thing sticks with oh, you wow. for so long. And no, I, 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 you know, it's, it's God that even these days I laugh and I talk about such things. But yeah, the reason I've gone into such details is just because I know the people who are going through that. Mm. And it's a reality for so mm. many couples. So yeah, that happened. But I remember the feeling I felt at that moment was just pure relaxation because I was in so much pain. Mm. You've been there when your kids are being born. Labor pain is not a joke. So once the relief comes, I was in, on a high for a bit. So the reality now came in the next day is when now we went to the doc back to the doctors and suddenly that pregnancy that was very intact at the top of my womb, there's nothing. And you know, um, he administered some medicine for me, which again was also very painful uh, because now it contracts your uterus so that it can clean nicely. Yeah, 
And uh, I went through a shaking over there and I was like, God, I don't like what you've done. <laughs> this is not what we agreed on. Mm. Um, no explanation for that loss uh, because again, everything looked perfect on scan. My blood work was fine, but somehow it just came out. Um, yeah, so soon after that, a lot of prayer, a lot of counseling. Um, your wife Marura really held my hand during that time. And you guys kept speaking life and a lot of our, our friends, our circles, well, like God is restoring me. I'm just like, you know, I don't even, I don't even know what's going on. Mm. I, I wasn't ready to conceive at that point, so I went through something uh, women do, which is a weight loss process. So I started this weight loss journey, and I lost a couple of kgs, about 15, and then suddenly I'm like, hi, hey, I can smell even people's thoughts. What's going on here? <laughs> 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 so I do a test, and uh, it's negative. Yeah. And then a week later, of course, my period is not there, and I'm like, ah, something's wrong. So, yeah, so I do another test, and now that's when I saw the double line. Go to the doctors, and they say, yeah, definitely there's a pregnancy here, but um, there's a big blood clot. Um, this is worrying to me, not the doctor telling me that, because it's, it's not, the placenta is not attaching very well because of that clot. Mm. Um, Peter and I go into a process of prayer, and God, we cannot lose another child, not mm. we, please, as in God, we, this, it can't happen to us again. So I remember it was his birthday, the third week, uh, 12 weeks, it was actually his birthday, he went for the scan, and the clot was not there. Mm. So Whose birthday? Oh, his birthday, mm. and that was his only wish, that everything to be perfect with mm. the scan. And the doctor does the scan, is like, where did the clot go? Did you bleed? No. There's nothing, like, wow. it, it disappeared. It's just miraculous. Mm, miraculous, mm. and uh, baby, it's good. Mm. Then I started having some challenges. I had anemia. Um, I could not bring my <coughs> my red blood cells up. Um, hemoglobin, hemoglobin up. Mm. Um, so there was that challenge. So I had to eat a lot of those iron stuff. Iron mm. stuff. Um, I also had placenta previa, where the placenta is down instead of up, which was also a challenge. So we could not travel, could not be on bumpy roads. Um, I could not dance. I could not run, walk, like it was, I had to... You had to be very careful. Very careful, yeah. like walk, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. So that pregnancy... H how were you treating her at that point? What? Like an egg. Yes, <laughs> yes, I tried as much as possible to offload any yes. unnecessary things from mm -hmm. her. Um, I could not lift the baby, our toddler now. Yeah, yeah, so we had to get as much help as possible. Yeah. Because now we have a boy who is quite active, running around. Him, he doesn't know. So, so he, he charges at you, hits you, jumps on you, flies on you. You know. So I had to intervene and um, and 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 try to explain to him that you know don't don't hit mommy this way, don't do this mm. to mommy and mm. stuff like that. Mm. But uh, I tried as much as possible to make sure that she's comfortable. Yeah. And here's the thing, Don. You know what your spouse is going through if you're with them when they're going through it. Yeah. All yeah, right? Yeah. I was with her at the hospital yeah. when the, the um, what did you call it? The, fe the Not the fetus. The fetus was coming out. Yeah. I was there. Yeah. I saw her going into the washroom and I saw her coming out wow. and the devastation. Wow. I saw her in pain. I saw her crying. And so because of that image I had, I made up my mind to help her unburden any other thing hmm. it would have been different if i was away absolutely the whole time absolutely because all i would be knowing are stories from her and she'd be like you know this happened and i'm like oh, okay okay but i i can't relate yeah but now because we are walking i'm there every hospital visit i'm seeing she's crying i'm seeing she's in pain i'm seeing we're rushing to hospital it's an emergency we're mm. being handled this way mm. i was like you know what yeah. the least i can do yeah is be there for her, yeah. help her, yeah. and, and, and I, I know one of the things that happened during that time, and people usually say, hey Pete, you know you, you are home, what's happening? It's because of what we went through in our first five years, yeah. six years of our marriage. Yeah. Dawn, for five years, there's no night I didn't sleep at home mm. in our marriage. Mm. There's no night. I was home every you single were present. day. You were present. Every single day. Mm -hmm. yeah. Every single day of our marriage for five years because of the sensitivity, because of the things that my wife was going through. Um, and so I tried as much as possible to give her um, the help 
the assistance, um, the care, the love, um, the hospital visits, the medicine, the, mm. the, the foot massage or foot massage, the back rub, um, because she's going through all those changes yeah. in her body. So, yeah. And many times men, yeah. men don't um, engage at that level. Yeah, yeah it's, so you, it's strange. Yeah, it's, it's very strange. unfamiliar. Yeah. Completely. And especially African men. Yeah. You know, you know in yeah. the West, I, I see many yeah, times they're quite they're involved. Quite, they're quite yeah. involved. Yeah. Um, did you feel mm -hmm. his presence? Oh, gosh, yes. Oh, my goodness. Um, I think if there's someone who's not left my side through that whole process has been my husband. Like, literally, he was there. All the doctors I've interacted with know him because he's the one who walks first into to the room when they're doing a certain procedure test. He's there, li there, literally. So he's always been there with me when I'm bursting into tears, when I'm so scared, when I'm laughing, when I'm excited. When I think all my pregnancy tests I've done when he's around. Mm. So it's always just for baby bonga. Yeah, you know, and we're laughing. We're like, oh my God, I can't believe this is so fast. You know, wow. so the, he's always just been there. And I really Kudos thank to God. You. Kudos mm. to you. That's a good, yeah, yeah. It's such a, it's something I can't even explain because it means the world yeah. to, to, to me. And also I think to most wives, like just having your man next to you. And especially during those, even a normal pregnancy, you need support. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's not easy. Yeah. 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 So anyway, so this pregnancy, we are treating it like an egg. Um, Pete is going out of his way. I remember there's a couple's retreat uh, that year as well. And because they couldn't travel by road, they couldn't travel by SGR, you know, he had to organize for flights for me uh, because, you know, again, very delicate. Um, yeah. And then there was a lot of, we were in a season where we were praying a lot. So there was a lot of people around us praying, coming to our house to pray, us going to their homes to pray, um, conferences. We had attended a lot of those. And every time I look back, everyone would just pray for me to finish this pregnancy properly. Like you'll carry this baby to term, you will deliver safely, you'll be okay. That was actually what was just going around most of the time. So I knew, you know, we were going to be okay, uh, but you know, I never, I would never would see the life. I don't know. When I would pray for this child, I would not mm. see beyond. I would not see this baby as a toddler. I would not see this baby a crawling person. I, it was just something very hidden from me. Mm. Yeah. And then, okay. So, <laughs> so yeah. Um, so we continue the story of, yeah. 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 So we found out it's a girl. And I remember Peter had got, I was looking for parking in this doctor's office. And then I told the doctor to just check. And then he, he, he confirmed it's a girl. So when Pete is just walking into the... I wanted to surprise him later. You know, the Yawazungus do this gender reveal <laughs> thing. <laughs> he walked into the room and I was like, it's a girl! You know, I was so happy. And Pete finally, you know, he was just like, hey, I'm going to room here this time. You're having a girl. You know, and then you plan everything. I had a baby sprinkle, which is a smaller version of a baby shower. I, I can't keep up. <laughs> yeah, it is. There's something called a sprinkle. I can't. I can't. I can't. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And there's even something smaller than a sprinkle. I think baby drop or something. What? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we did a baby sprinkle because I had most items. So yeah. they were just bringing me a few diapers here and there. Uh -huh. It was beautiful. People prayed over me and all that. And then, yeah. So by this time, of course, there are a few challenges with my, with my health, with the pregnancy, but... To Mejikaza, we had 37 weeks. Yeah, so this night, particular night, I had, um, I had gone for a burial in Moranga, and they were, I was hosting Bible study at my house, and I realized, but they learned to touch a chesa visuri. I can feel like the movement is reduced a bit. Uh, so I cooked for all, this whole group because I was trying to be active, and then now when they came in our group, there's a doctor who's delivered so many women. So I told him, and then he made me lie down in the chair. He, he improvised. Uh, you see the paper towel, the kitchen paper yeah, towels? Yeah, yeah. That thing that's in the middle, he put it in my stomach, and he found the heartbeat and was like, you know what? The baby is fine, I can feel the baby is fine. Um, do this first thing in the morning, that's around 11 p.m. First thing in the morning, just go get checked. And I was like, poor. But that had he come back? Yeah, yeah, yeah he was he already back. back. Okay. And I, I, we were, I even had the text, I deleted them later, but I, I told him, hey, no deduction movement. Have you spoken to doctor? I had called my doctor and told him, and my doctor had told me, observe, um, let me know. And I was like, once in a while, I'd, I'd feel, you know, like a kick here and there, but when you're towards the end of the pregnancy, the baby is very active. So when you can feel, ayapana, it's very reduced. It's there, but it's not as norm, normal, mm. like, you know. But sometimes people tell you because of the space, um, because she was a big baby, because of the space, 
they're not able to move. Yeah, the uh, mobility yeah, is not yeah. as, yeah. So uh, my head was there a mm. bit. Talk to my mom, same thing. Everyone I was calling was telling me the same thing. Mm. No one told me go to hospital now. Even my own sister, my own gut did not tell me to go to hospital now. So anyway, I host my guests, they leave. They leave around midnight. They had prayed for me because I was delivering in a week from that time. It was a, se a sixth, I was delivering on the 14th. That was the schedule? Yes, yeah, yes, okay. schedules, okay. yes, on the mm. 14th Valentine's Day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, by this point I had ordered a lot of stuff from Amazon and my stuff was just delaying. And I was like, what's going on? They had not arrived at the time they were supposed to arrive. And I was like, me is coming, what's going on? Anyway, so the next day, that night, I did not sleep. And I was like, God, me, I know something is wrong. Now, now, now I'm panicking because initially it was, um, okay, okay. But now I'm just like, something is very off. And I was just started speaking life. And I would even repeat the word Zoe, Zoe. You know, Zoe means life and it's a girl name. So I was like, maybe even God, you should just change this baby's name to Zoe. I remember I told you that. Because I was just like, life, God, What, what life. was her name? Zora. Mm. Her name was Zora Genesis. Wait, I'm, I'm forgetting. Zora Noru Genesis Karaoke. So mm. Zora means dawn, uh, dawn of a new day, bright. She, because she represented a new beginning for us. We felt that in our spirits. Mm. And Genesis, of course, being the first book of the Bible, new beginnings and all that. Anyway, so again, I know. So in the morning, I pack my hospital bag. I didn't even tell Pete. I pack my hospital bags. I take a bath. I take a shower. And I tell him, uh, let's go to Hosea right now. So we go. We find our doctor is not in that day. He's never, never been present. Like, he's always there. So this particular day, someone else is sitting in for him, and he, he, he tried to find the heartbeat. And then finally, he found Even Peter was the one helping him uh, on the scan. And, you know, we were a bit relieved, but I was just like, something is very wrong. Um, so every time I'm about to have a baby, I'm given a steroid shots to mature mm -hmm. the baby's lungs, just for precaution, in case they come in early or, you know. So by that time, we had already done our shots. So this baby was actually ready to come out. Mm. So the doctor is telling me, go to this particular hospital, which is a bit further. And you know, so we decided to go and I'm lying on this table for 45 minutes. We can hear the heartbeat throughout the whole hospital. It's a big heartbeat, a strong heartbeat, but the baby is just not moving. So I got to my lame chill, you know? And then now the doctor calls, just calls in and says, you know what? Because she's already in the hospital, let her deliver. Let's deliver. So because I was not supposed to deliver at that hospital, we ask for the bill and, and the, it, they give us and we look at it and they asked Pete, do we just do it here? And Pete was like, yeah, like, you know. So the nurse in charge, we tell her, you had actually booked this particular hospital because they liked their private rooms. Mm -hmm. And she was like, no, it's okay, you can make it. No, Mdota Kosawa, you can go. Are you sure? Do we take an ambulance? No, the ambulance before they transfer you, it will take so long, it's better you just drive. And we say, sour. So me, I call everybody, my sisters, my mom, everyone, my, my Bible study group, mm. pray for us. The baby is coming. We are heading to Hosea. So Pete is the one driving. Now from, <laughs> from that point, my, my brain entered into like, it was capturing everything. I remember exactly how the road looked like that day. I remember where this cop was standing. I remember every car that passed us. My brain somehow was just capturing. I remember how, the manu how we maneuvered because Pete was trying to reach to Hosea, you know, as quick as he could. It was across town. How long did it take? <sighs> it wasn't too long, actually. Yeah, it felt like three hours, though. Uh, yeah, so we are already now at the hospital and they feel kicks. And I'm like, this kid wants to kill me. Why is she taking so, why is she stressing me out so much? That's what I said. Like, well, she, she should just kick normally so that I'm at peace to fikir Hosea. And then at that time, we had not agreed on the name. The name, naming her was the hardest thing we've ever had to do. We've named four children now, but hers was just the hardest thing to do. We could not get a name for her. So I'm just like, babe, let's name this child, you know? And you know, Pete was praying over her. I remember I, was, I put my phone um, on record to record his prayer and you know, speaking life. We were like, look, Ebu come out. You stressed us enough today, you know? So we pack the car and rush to the emergency. They take their time. They were not fast at all. The doctor actually even had to come himself to grab me and rush me to theater. I remember that at this point now, I am in panic mode. I feel like my stomach is going to just, you know, and I'm like, I need to use the bathroom. The doctor is like, you don't have time for that. I'm like, I have to go to the bathroom. So I go to the bathroom and there are like three nurses standing over me like this. Madam, you need to be in theater. 
because now it's like I feel like I'm having a running stomach because of how tense I was. So I lay on the table and I'm just like, God, I told the doctor something is very wrong. No, 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 relax, man. So we can see cha, 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 people are running. Cha, cha, cha. At this point, my husband has been left outside. They do not allow him to go in. And then they have this huge light it's in. It's a CS. You're going through Yes, yes, I'm going through us. Yes, yeah. yes. All my children uh, have come through that way. So there's usually this big light in theater. And now, for some reason, again, I'm seeing everything there, which is not, it doesn't happen. I've been in theater four times. It's never happened to me before. But now, it's like God. I was having an aerial view of myself. I don't know how I can explain that. Yeah, I, I get it. Yeah, so I could see what's going on in. I'm very short sighted, so even if it was a reflection, I couldn't really see. But I could see everything that was going on. What was going on oh, in, yeah. in your mind at this time? You're outside, you're panicked, you've driven across town, you know how panicky she is, what's going on with you? So I'm, I'm watching all this unfold. Um, and my mind is telling me things will be okay, you know. It's still positive. They, they, they always end up well. So I remember making the turn to the hospital, getting to the hospital, rushing to get documentation as she's being checked. And then the doctor finally comes and uh, she's, she's now wheeled into theatre. So from there, I, 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 I know how long it a CS takes, mm. yeah. Especially emergency one. Especially emergency one. So it's 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 in and out quickly, minutes. yeah. Because I remember first one son what happened because it was the same hospital. Mm. They went in, doctor came out. The um, was it the pediatrician? Yeah. yeah, yes, the ped. Yeah. The pediatrician came and said, uh, you know, the father Pete with Julie, yes, congratulations. Uh, the boy is good, healthy. Apgar test is good. The boy is well and he's shaking your hand and I'm like, hey, okay. So that's what usually happens. So this time round, I'm outside the theater. Mm. I'm pacing around praying. And then I notice the time she's taking longer than normal. Than normal. And, and I start feeling sick. Then I text you, that's when I texted you. So I wrote to you a message and says, Dawn, emergency, we are at the hospital at this place I didn't even tell you to come. I just told you, emergency, pray for us. And then after like 15 minutes, I saw you walking in with Nancy. And you came and, uh, and we continued praying outside the theater. Mm. Um, and, and I'm wondering what's going on? It's taking so long. Mm. So my mind starts thinking, is my wife okay? Have, have I lost both of them? Because no one is telling me anything. Yeah. And my stomach is just churning and I'm feeling so sick. And I'm wondering what's going on. It's taking so long. No one is coming to say anything. Um, and, and, and at that point, I step away from positivity. And now I start thinking about worst case scenario. I'm like, what if my wife doesn't walk out of this place? And my baby. What if I walk out of this hospital just alone? We came, three of us, then I walk back alone. All that was going through my mind, you know? And, uh, and, and you and Nancy were with, with me, praying at the corridor. Um, and yeah, and Julia's sister was there. And I texted one of my good friends, also Joe. We had just come from burying his dad. And when I wrote to him a message, he came all the way from Moranga. He didn't even say anything and drove quickly to the hospital. Um, and then I see the doctor coming towards me. Uh, and I could tell he looked quite uneasy. Yeah. And then he says, uh, I'm, I'm so sorry, I have bad news for you. The baby didn't make it. Yeah. And I have never felt what I felt that day, my entire life. So before, so let me just explain now what's going on in my end. Eh? So, so the baby, uh, I can see, I can see the baby being removed. She was very long. I could see a very <laughs> tall baby. Uh, she's junked out. And remember it was very dramatic because there's a whole doctor on top of me pushing my belly, like from up here, you know, these doctors have grabbed the baby and I can just see people running. So my pediatrician, because it was an emergency, he was not able to make it, the one who receives my babies. 
So there's a lady who was there. I've never seen her, I've never met her, I've never heard of her. I've tried to look for her, I've tried to Google her. Never heard. But she was God sent. Because in that point, I was sweating so much. Pastor Don, I've never seen anybody sweat like Even Elid Kipchoge does not sweat like that. She was standing next to me, wiping sweat off of my body. And she was singing because I was singing loud. They asked them if they could play music, they could not. I was playing. I was singing. Um, Miracle working God, your name is Yahweh. That song I started listening to it in the car. I, I was singing at the top of my lungs. She joined me and started singing with me. She was singing. I think she had just seen. I don't know. She had just felt. Uh, yeah. So they grab my baby and you know normally they place them there and you can see them cleaning and do whatever. I see them just running and so many people just run behind me and then I was trying to like turn and see what was going on. <laughs> I started breathing like that, and I told the doctor, is my baby okay? Then I started screaming. Now from there, um, he had to sedate me because I was going to go into shock. And you see my stomach, is, my abdomen is open. Uh, I'm going through the surgery. So they had to sedate me so that I don't go into shock and you know lose blood and stuff like that. So when now I'm in the recovery room, because of course I went to quiet, but I could just, I was in a, I keep telling people I feel like I was, I was at the gate of heaven. I was begging God. I was like, God, give me, even if she's a vegetable. Even if she'll never speak, she'll never move, she'll just give me. God, please. I was even telling God, don't embarrass yourself. God, we are your servants. Please, you're embarrassing yourself. I was, I felt like God was there and I was just like punching him, telling him, you cannot do this to me. You cannot do this to us. This cannot happen. Because I knew what had happened, but I was just believing God for a miracle at that point. Had you already sensed something? Oh, for sure. I knew. Um, I knew. I knew. Me, I knew. Even before anyone knew. Me, I knew. For sure. Because my belly became like five times heavier. You just, you know, it's like when, if you've carried a coffin, it's heavy, dead weight. I, there was just something that felt, something felt very off. So I'm in the recovery room, unconscious. I don't know if it's unconscious, but like, sedated. And I can just hear a wailing. So this whole time I'd been joking with my friends that I've never had my husband cry. And it had been a running joke in our circles for a long time. So I called the nurse. I, I, I pick on her and I'm like, is that my husband? She told me, yes. And there were like three nurses there, just all of them are holding themselves like this, you know. And I'm like, take me to him. And you know, I'm, you know, you're not supposed to leave the recovery room because they're just checking your blood pressure, all these things. And they're just like, take me to my husband. So they grab me the bed and they take me to him. And Pete just collapses on my chest. And I hold him and he tells me, baby didn't make it. And I tell him, I know. And I held him and I just, my duty there was just to, and I told him, I felt like my duty there was just to make him stop feeling so bad because I told him there was no devil in this. That's what I said. There was no devil in this. I, I have experienced heaven. I felt like I had a heavenly experience that that mm. point. I didn't feel any devil mm. grabbing my child. Nothing felt demonic. It felt so heavenly. It was the opposite experience. And he, you know, he laid on my chest and I was just like, there was no devil in this. Yeah. So now he was explaining. So me, me, what actually woke me up from my unconscious state was just the wailing. And I was just like, take me to my husband now. I don't care if it's not hospital protocol. And yeah, and now from that experience, I was like, because I used to joke, you never even cry. So I was like, from that day, I said, I never want to hear my husband cry ever again because, yeah. How did it hit you? So, so yeah, so when the doctor was coming um, and told, you know, <laughs> there are things you don't expect here. Like there are things, mm. it's the last thing on your, on your radar, mm. yeah? Because you know there's a God in heaven, yes. you know, so we've prayed, welcome. you know, there's, there's, there's a prophetic word hanging around yes. you. So it can't be that all this was happening and there was a part of me that was prepared for the worst. I wasn't at all, at all, at all. So when the doctor comes and tells me the baby didn't make it, I felt like the world, the earth moved under my feet. Never felt that, never experienced anything like that. I felt like 
an 18 wheeler mm. hit me so hard and I remember I just I just fell and you are there you held me you were behind me so you held me so I, I completely I didn't even wait for him to finish I just fell thank God you are there to hold me otherwise it would have been another story yeah and I felt like the earth was the rug was pulled under my feet and and it's the worst thing I have never we've never lost anyone in our family anyone even on my side like any close person it's never happened we've never gone through grief and I'm here thinking God we are the first ones <laughs> we are the first ones to go through this the ones you know? who serve you <laughs> we are the first ones you know and and I think I, I can't remember what happened after. I don't know where you carried me to, but I remember falling on you. Mm. I think James was there also from my RKC. And I started wailing. So that wailing is what she had. And I wailed and I wailed. I don't cry. I'm not, I don't mm. usually cry at, cry at all. And I felt my, someone was pushing at my chest because So I felt like someone was pushing against my chest and and it, it it dawned on me that Pete you have to take this journey you have to take it it's happened it can't be reversed and um, my desire of having a daughter has just been has just gone like that for now and, uh, and I remember when Rev came, I told him, Rev, you must bring her back to life. Please go pray for her and bring her back to life. You know, I felt like I did have the faith then to even pray. I think I just, all I could do was just wail and cry and, and just ask. I just felt weak. So I remember calling Rev and saying, we're going to see her. So they brought her. And again, how they brought her wasn't, it was very trauma traumatizing. And um, I told her, I told Rev, Rev, please lay your hands on her. She must come back to life, you know. And I remember Rev just putting his hands on, on her small body and, um, and praying, you know. And our parents by then, that time had come um, and they were also there. That was probably the lowest I've ever been in my life. I don't mm. think there's any place lower than that I've ever been. Yeah, that was the lowest. That moment there was like the lowest moment. And I felt, forget about positivity. Bad things happen. Forget about claiming and naming. And, and I felt like I had experienced what you'd call a spiritual crash. You know the way you can be driving and you have the best car yeah. And then you crash and you don't know how it crashed, mm. you know, mm. best car, best sensors, mm -hmm. best everything, best. And then people are picking you on the road and you're wondering, I didn't even know what happened. That's what I felt. Mm. I felt like this was a spiritual crash and I felt like I crashed spiritually. Um, and, and again, the hospital, how they handled the baby, I was so upset. So I'm dealing with pain. I'm dealing with... And I, and I felt like shouting at these people and telling them, to you, this is another baby who's passed on to us. This is our life. You can't just handle her casually like that, you know. Um, Did you know actually my dad, <laughs> my dad held one of the guest shots. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Like so, this is my grandchild. Like mm. to you it's yeah. a dead body, but mm. to us this yeah. is our whole. Yeah. What, so, did, what did the next couple of days look like? 
So it was, it, it was, it was diff that day felt like it wouldn't end, Oof. you know. And of course now people are streaming into the hospital for prayers, praying, pole, and I'm like... It should be congratulations, it, like it, it, it didn't make sense. Like it, it can't be that 50 people are gathering because we've lost, yeah. you know. The hospital was jam-packed, the room we were in was packed yeah. with people. And I'm like, no, you know something different needs to happen. So people kept, kept coming. Um, uh, Don, you were there, Nancy was there, Rev was there, and, and stayed with us till late, prayed over us. At the hospital, I remember thinking to myself, now I understand why people commit suicide. Wow. At the hospital. Wow. I, it hit me. This is the point of desperation people get to and hopelessness and life and hope being cut short that you don't see tomorrow. Yeah. And a couple of times I actually was on the seventh floor, I think, or the sixth floor. Seventh. I was walking to the window and I was looking down and something kept telling me and I, I was like, this is, I understand why people do what they do because the level of pain is unbearable. Mm. The level of weight you're feeling, the level of anguish you're like, there's, there's no tomorrow. Mm. Yeah. So thank God people came helping us just move our minds away from that. Um, I think people liked it as cushions. Yeah. They made the punch feel less painful yeah. and for some reason I would even look forward, you know, because we were spending the night there, we would look forward to just having company because you now when everyone had left, it was Pete and I in the hospital. I and couldn't like, sleep the first night. No, no, not none of us could. You can At imagine. All. I've just, I'm just from a surgery, a major one, and I'm like, there should be a baby here. You know, mm. her being our Valentine's baby had bought the cutest flowery stuff. So, <laughs> let me tell you, there's no pain that could ever compare to that, especially not from my point of view as a mother. I've carried this baby so delicately. Mm. Mm. I have done everything even mm. beyond like i never missed any appointment i was on top of my medication my supplements i was praying so i was like god i go to the hospital at night why didn't you speak to me when we were pregnant with my son at the point of delivery the doctor wanted us to i was at i was 41 weeks and the doctor because it was our first child he was like i want you to push maybe three more days we see because he wanted the baby to come naturally and at that point i was like something is wrong and i kept insisting to him something is wrong he was very old school from his approach in his approach um i called nancy from the hospital and i was like the doctor is saying this and this and my gut is saying we should not wait a day more and you know she told me tell him that and we had the doctor had to write a note and say admit this lady at the inducer for delivery and my baby was born with a cord around his neck you know so should if we had waited that day or two more something would have happened mm. so with mm. my daughter i kept going back to god and thinking we've been spending all this time in your presence it never even because i spoke to my mother my mother is, my mom is very she's like me like sensitive very intuitive yeah if something mm. is wrong she's like go now julie i don't take go now go now repeat will bring everything to you Mm. She was like, no sleep. You know, everyone, that was what I heard. Even I remember from Googling. No, there was, as long as we can move a bit, you're fine. So nothing made me feel like run to Hosea right now. And the whole time, she, the heartbeat was there. So it was only at the delivery point is when she had passed. And I, you know, my mom, I remember her screaming, God, raise her. You raise the dead. You know, she was screaming. And I was just crying there with her because I'm like, my mom has gone through a similar experience. I was like, God, like, what have we done? Mm. I remember the next day after we had lost, people were coming in and we were seated in a, like, around setting like this. And I was wailing. And I, I thank God because people allowed me to just cry, you know. Because now me, the first day I was not feeling the pain too much because I was very medicated. Mm. They had given me so much. I was actually on a high. I was actually, I was laughing even because of medication. So the next day is when now medication had run off and the reality came it now mm -hmm. that yeah. there's nobody in this, in this belly. There's no one I can hold. The milk is coming in. Oh my God, I went through hell. And I remember crying and I was telling Pete, 
Do we have anybody's money? Do we have? Do we owe anybody anything? Why would it, this happen to us? Have you ever taken anybody's anything? Like I was just in such a, mm. you know, because like God just give me one reason why this would happen to us. Nipate two reason moja doni juange because it's because we talk to this person this way. You know, at least I love peace. Mm. But let me tell you, oh, I would not wish this on anybody. But it's happened to so many of our friends, even after our loss. So many people have gone through it and. Yeah, me I hit a very bad faith yeah. crisis. Um, yeah, the, the days after that were quite... I think it's, it's actually tough. tougher than the It's tougher loss. when you have to deal with the reality now mm. of things. Yeah. Mm. And, and, and to be honest, hospitals don't make it easy. Yeah. Our They're quite Kenyan mechanical. hospitals are quite rough. Yeah. Um, the language is so bad. So yeah. one of the things we had to sign was to sign off a document that had to do with how they will handle the body and the language that we had to sign off was so crude they talked about I don't know if it was a specimen I don't know what just some it makes sense to the med medics it doesn't make sense to parents someone who's lost a child it and doesn't make and we food. have to sign off and write and her putting her I had to read it first I didn't even allow her to read it I just told her, read it, let's just put our oh, signature. Goodness. That's yeah. how crass it was. It was so it was bad. So bad. And, and I, like, I, I fainted. And I'm like, immediately <sighs> I signed it, I walked, and this is someone who's just had a CS two days yeah. before. And I remember my friends holding me, and I was just like, God, it's easier to die. Like, I wish I could just die right wow. now. Wow. Because this is, I can't yeah. see mm. myself beyond. Mm. Mm. I don't even want to, you know? Yeah, yeah. But yeah people they, help. Thank God for people. Thank yeah, God for people. you can't do yeah. this alone. No, 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 no. So no. yeah, so we signed it off, and and I'm 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 just thinking I. I didn't sign up for this life. Men don't normally handle grief very well. Mm. So how did you handle this process? What you've gone through, um, the next couple of months. Um, yes, you know you've gone through this traumatic period. Here's your wife looking up to you uh, for strength, but you're also going through your own battles in your mind. And I like something that Julie said, that there was a faith, there's, there's a trauma that comes in with it, and especially where your faith yeah. is concerned. Yeah. How did you deal with that? It was, it was difficult. Um, and I, I kept telling my wife, and this is what used to happen, when people will come to visit us to say Polly, their attention was on her. Wow. It wasn't on me. Yeah. And at some point I felt like screaming at everyone and telling them, do you all understand I've, I'm, I also lost a baby? Yeah. All the attention, and understandably so. So, don't you not only know how to handle yourself as a man during grief even people don't know how to handle you wow. during grief wow as a man wow it was wow. easier for them to say sorry to my wife mm. get some few things for her and and i entered a mode where i wanted to protect her also so it also felt like i was also part of the team comforting her <laughs> and and i had to put a game face on or a brave face uh, and at some point i had to tell her is it that people don't know that I'm also, this was our baby, not just your baby, you know? Mm. Because anyone, most of the people who walked into our house to say, Paul, online, bypass. It's Julie, really how are you doing? Yeah. Is everything we're praying for you? God yeah. will restore you again. And I'm there, okay, let me just go to the kitchen and serve chai. Um, and, and, and so even people don't know how to deal with you. Yeah. 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 They don't know what to say to you. They don't know. Um, how to help you process through it and and for me the joy I found during that time we started building resilience before even we came to joy because three things happened we faced an adversity it's a reality now we begin we began a journey of building resilience resilience is a muscle you exercise it because none of us is born with mm. resilience mm. You mm. have to exercise, so day one, day two, and we started taking a day at a time. Yeah. And thank God for people who came, and Don, you were one of them, saying, let's just go. You, let's go. Let's take a long drive. Let's go somewhere. Let's get out of this environment, mm. you know? And slowly by slowly, um, I started finding healing. 
but my joy was to see my wife recovering because while I was dealing with psychological trauma, she was dealing with psychological trauma, physical trauma, spiritual trauma. The baby was ours. I didn't carry the baby physically. Yeah. I don't know what it means to be attached to someone mm. and you don't have them anymore. She yeah. knows that. Yeah. Yeah. So she had to deal with trauma at like Different three or levels. four levels. Yeah. Yeah. I had to deal with psychological only. Yeah. And so we had to get medicine to stop her milk from coming out. Wow. Because where do you take the milk? So there's a daily reminder. There's a daily reminder yeah. that there should have been someone here and your body is craving to nurture, but there's nothing, there's no one. Well, wow. Julie, what was going through mm. your life your, during this time, thinking through, it's not only you, but you're yeah. also seeing people, probably you were seeing people ignoring Pete yeah. or his feelings. Yeah. How, how, how did that make you feel and how did you deal with that? I, you know, the good thing with, with, with Pete and I is that we are very close. So we would just sit sometimes and we would just tease each other. Now, like he would start making fun of himself because of course he didn't want to put that. Yeah. Of not, yeah. No, he would never. But he, you know, I could see it as well because everyone was bringing me all these nice shower gels, all these nice uh, mm. chocolate things, you know. And I told him, baby, baby, we'll be eating this together. You know, we'll be showering with these nice uh, shower gels. Uh, to, you know, like we just started, he, we, he, he found a way of letting me know. Mm. And um, he made it light for me. Like he didn't, I didn't start having again the burden of now when people come, I want them, oh, ah, Pio, yeah, me fiwa. No, he, there's a way he, he put it that it didn't feel like a burden to me. Okay. Because by that time, honestly, I could not bear anything yeah. anymore. Yeah, but something that Pete did that, I, I, you know, I, and I'm, I'm glad that he was able to process his grief his own way, but he really came through because he knew I needed him. And I know he had gone through loss, but I needed him so badly because I was having panic attacks, mm. severe ones. I could not be alone, even in the toilet. I could not be alone in bed. Um, I felt like the angel of death was coming for me or they were coming for my, my two-year-old then um, or for him. So anytime I'd go down for a nap, um, he would stay there. Like, you go sleepy. He'd sit there. There was a time he, he had to drop our son to his parents and I, I would have had to be left alone at home and I could not be left alone. Like, if you want me to die, just leave me alone. So he organized, called my parents without me knowing. My parents came and dad and mom were seated there watching TV. I remember my mom was just kneeling her minji there and, you know, he left me with my parents, took our son to his parents. Just the care and just like, I will do anything in my power to make this feel lighter for my wife. Wow. And you know, that's something I really thank God for. Wow. Yeah. Now I know you went to the lowest of the lowest, especially mm. when it comes to the, yeah. you know, your walk with Christ, where oh, you said, you yeah. know what, yeah, ah, you please. ditched me on this, yeah. I'm ditching you on this, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was that period like for you? Hey, it was dark. Um, so our baby died in, Ma in February. February. March, COVID. the country was locked down. So you COVID can imagine hit. not having visitors oh, wow. anymore. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> like life has changed for the whole world. And not for us now, again, now it's more now. It's even worse. Like now we can't even go because we had planned to go to the States. So we were planning to, you know, get our visas, everything. Countries now have been locked. Like it was just me. I knew for a fact the world was ending because <laughs> there's no way the world can continue after this. Yeah. <laughs> I knew the for a fact. Yeah, oh, the timing, God was so. coming for us. I just knew because it just felt so weird. Mm -hmm. um, I hit a huge faith crisis. I remember I was listening to something and this lady was just talking about the Islamic faith and how they handle loss. And I was like, for a minute, I was like, me, I'm going to convert. Now, I'm not to show, you know, because God wasn't making sense to me. He felt, I felt like God was a bully. And, you know, they call him El Gibor, but I thought he bullies us. Not, mm. not the enemy. I felt like he wants to make us. <laughs> because when someone would mention the name sovereignty of God, and like, yeah, you know, it's the so I'm like, I don't want to hear if it's if it's him. He's happy when you're going through hell. Well, me, I don't want that God. I, I, you know, I don't, forget it. And there was a time I just made it in my mind that forget you, God. But day you are a scum. I don't want to hear anything about you. And there's a kibaridi I felt. There's a cold I felt. I don't, I can't explain it, where I just felt God wasn't there. 
and I felt it's like I've been thrown in the coldest place. And uh, for some reason, I was like, okay, I kinda need you back. You know, like, there's a key cover. There's something I feel in God, a warmth. And this whole time, I began to allow him. Um, we called our friends, uh, Bishop Febi Dahosa and Lori, who've been through a similar experience. And they were the first people, one among the first people we called, and they began sharing their story. And they were like, because right now you're angry at God, we've been there play worship music so we began playing some worship music through the night like our nini was on all night and god would start ministering to me i'm here even if i didn't want to talk to him but i would feel him i would feel him covering mm. our son i would mm. feel him mm. covering mm. me i would feel him taking care of us because mm. there was a time when i just decided you're a scam forget you i felt so alone so i i i, I remember just that coldness of god where are you and you never know where you I don't want you anymore. But now, after I felt that, that ah, I can't live without this God, I need him. I began now to look at him from a point of teach me the basics that you love me. Mm. Because right now, I feel like you hate me so much, yeah. you want every bad thing to happen to yeah. me. Yeah. Teach me that you have great plans for me. Right now, I feel like the world is hopeless. I feel like oh, my family is hopeless. I feel like we are going to all die and bury each other tomorrow like it just felt like the end yeah and then the prayers of my family the prayers of my mother the prayers of my husband over me the prayers of my friends it's just the people i did not pray for such a long time and the only time i could pray was just god help me i remember crying that so many times at night because i was like i'm not i can't even breathe because grief you know grief is physical the it first is. it is Days of grief, it's a physical thing. Mm. You feel it here, mm. you can't even eat. It's solid. Yeah. It's, a, it's here, like it's, it was the biggest, it's like mm. k k th things stuck here. And I was like, I used to tell Pete when they would offer me breakfast, wait for that thing to go fast. And we would wait, uh, you know, 2 p.m., 3 p.m., until that feeling, dead kidogos and I could at least drink some juice. But as long as it was there, um, I could not eat, I could not think, I could mm. not function. So it took a while for that thing to go. And then also we took up uh, grief counseling immediately, which also I pulled in my husband and I'm so glad he took it in because I didn't want us to grieve separately. Couples who go through loss, divorce, very, like, yeah. what are the statistics? I was gonna ask, yeah. What, yeah. What, 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 um, what do you think, yeah. what part is played by yeah. you two being yeah. together in this? It's so important, it, it's, it's as important as keeping you two together. Yeah. So we started reading these books and one of the things we, we saw in the book was that 75% of couples who lost their children or child ended up in divorce, primarily because of blame. So they blame each other. They blame each other. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, is there something you didn't do right? You, you didn't respond as fast as you should. You, you were constantly away. That's why this happened. And, and you can't pick yourself, you're dealing with such heavy loss, any additional thing being introduced just completely destabilizes you. Did you at any point blame her for anything? No. Or blame yourself? No, we didn't. Of course, we started thinking maybe we should have stayed at the hospital we were in, but something beautiful happened during that time. We decided to grieve together. Mm. So we went to grief counseling, started seeing a therapist together. Mm. So it wasn't Pete sorting himself out and Julie sorting herself out. Yeah. We were in it together. Yeah, yeah. So we were in counseling together. Number two, the other beautiful thing that happened during that time, I can't explain it, but we walked in such a heightened level of agreement. Mm. It has, we've never experience that level of agreement. I think even today, we are like, hey, can we, can we, let's remember how we used to be in agreement. 2020 was one of the best years of our marriage. Wow. Yeah, yeah. we've experienced this massive of loss. Yes. Wow. But we are in such, mm. I think it's, there's a part of us that felt it's you two I and this something that yeah. has happened yeah. to the oh, both of wow. you and it's not anyone's so fault. Yeah. That is so and good. so we were agreeing on things, we were praying together, we were laughing together, we were trying out things together. Yeah. And so so that's what ended up happening. Margaret, yeah? look, yeah. Th this story, even unpacking it is is so <laughs> magnanimous. <laughs> it's, it, yeah, it's it's I mean it's it's the world. It feels like yeah. uh, you guys got pregnant soon after. How? 
you know, when you're in the middle of grieving. I think it's that part of agreement also. Checked in. That, <laughs> no, me I know what happened. There was a, there's another prophet who visited our house. Do you remember? Do you know his name? I know his name. Anito. <laughs> prophet yeah. Don Gishane. Prophet Don Gishane, man. <laughs> in the, in the... I was, fear, 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 I was waiting to hear a serious. I was waiting to hear a serious one. Yeah, the serious one. <laughs> yeah. Like he came when you were just in the deepest of darkest of painfulest part of our grief, and he was just like, you know, guys, me I know. <laughs> you guys are having a childhood, and I remember just thinking, Don, Don, in the name of Jesus. And not only that, he quiet. said, he said. <laughs> the ministry that will come out of this. Yes. And I remember we were like, forget Taki. it. We don't Isuma want to like, like, keep it back to sender. We don't, we don't want, want anything. Like, we are good. We don't. If this is how ministries are born, <laughs> ah, we don't want. Let, let, it, wow. let it. So you came and spoke that over our lives. And uh, at that point, we were just like, so for me, I was just going through this. So when, when we learned this in therapy, you have empty hand syndrome when you lose a baby and my hands felt empty. And there are parents who actually who get teddy bears that are put some weights on mm -hmm. that weigh the, what the baby would weigh, and it helps in oh, the healing. Wow. So me, because I had a uh, two-year-old, I would really hold him. We even started sleeping together. Yeah, mm -hmm. we were sleep trained, but we started even sleeping with him because it helped in my healing because my, uh, my hands weren't so mm -hmm. empty. But again, the hands were just so empty, so bare. I'm like, there should be a child on my bosom. There should be a child on my laps. Mm. God help us. I don't want to go through pregnancy. Me, I don't want. Me, I don't want anything. Me, I just want a child. So we started looking at adoption. Because of the pandemic, all adoption agencies were shut down. Shut. shut down, yeah. No adoption took place in 2020. I'm like, God, even any of my cousins shall go, anyone who just doesn't want their baby. Like, we're just like, God, give us something, you know, to just keep our hands busy. And because we had all this love, we had prepared our son for a sibling, so even him was going through his own thing. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, there was a time I was just like, maybe they, if it's God's will, me, I'm open. I'm an open vessel. So, <laughs> I, I normally tell people I don't know what happened, honestly, but I remember we just tested and and yeah. the recovery this is what's yes, mind blowing there were some miracles after the, the recovery after. was so fast that it didn't the year didn't end we had another baby so even people who came remember it was covid yeah. we decided to move out somewhere in the bundus for 3 months stayed there people who met us a year later thought this, this was, was the baby yeah. wow because of how in the same year because wow. we lost February 7th, yeah. January 1st, we had a baby. Mm. Like we went through grief, <laughs> went through healing, recovery, pregnancy. It was a beautiful pregnancy. Birth, <laughs> another baby before the anniversary, of February the of the loss of the other one. Imagine. My goodness. And, and so and now you know, we're having a baby before February. It yeah. was so fast. I still can't yeah. describe what it was. But uh, because of time done, I know we need to wrap up. You move from facing adversity. So we had to face the adversity. Mm. We went into building resilience. Mm. So we had to pray together, build resilience, breathe, breathe out, cry when we needed to, find help, read books, mm. go through therapy. And then the third step is usually to find joy again. So you face adversity, you build resilience, and then you find joy. And sometimes finding that joy can be hard because you feel like you should always commemorate, feel sad. And so at some point we were not able to celebrate our birthdays, our anniversaries, because we are like, why, why, why can we be this happy? Hard? And yet we lost a baby, mm. you know? Yeah. We need to be sad yeah. for the next five yeah. years. Yeah. But we had to teach ourselves to find joy. <clears throat> find joy, laugh, celebrate. When her anniversary came, we'd go somewhere, I think would um, yeah. even get her cake, celebrate with the other kids, mm -hmm. you know, laugh, laugh, pray, you know. Our son will still ask God and say, God, where is our girl? We need to bring her back to us, mm -hmm. you know. So we went through those stages of facing mm -hmm. adversity, crazy, 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 building resilience and then finding joy. And then we realized that that entire thing came back full circle when now the ministry you talked about started kicking in. Mm. Well, now, let's talk about that for a moment. Yeah. I was going to ask about that. Yeah. How has that and the entire experience of mm. losing baby Zora mm. brought healing to others? How has that, and, and then what does it do to you? 
-hmm. every time you see someone coming mm -hmm. and they're coming from a point of you guys have experienced this yeah how can you walk us through this yeah. how has that been for you it's it's been one of the things that happened to me especially my heart became so sensitive yeah. i can't explain it mm -hmm. i became i started feeling things i wasn't feeling before mm -hmm. i'm feeling mm -hmm. people i'm feeling people suffering i'm yeah. feeling their pain it's like before that i was quite <laughs> quite hard then this happened and my heart was just very soft empathetic. very empathetic and so we, we took she took a social media break so people didn't know for like a whole year yeah and people started texting each other what happened to julie what happened mm -hmm. to Pete? does mm -hmm. anyone know any of you who are their friends where are they because yeah. we took a hiatus for for a while mm. So when we come, we came back and started talking about it. Then people were like, "Oh, Kumbi, this is what happened." Oh wow! Then referrals started coming in. Yeah. Wow! People will write to her, DM her, and say, "My friend has lost a baby. My, this couple has lost a baby. Are you available?" So she even went ahead and and did a certification on grief counseling. Wow! To to be able to help people a bit more. Mm. Till today, she's handling. She's been more active than I am especially mothers who've lost their children mm. till today she has one two three four five cases she's walking them through praying with them wow. encouraging them speaking life to them what you spoke to us as ministry is now becoming life to other people that back then will be like forget it for it can't happen it's impossible and it's happening yeah people reaching out saying i can't i can't i don't know how to live another day Mm -hmm. um, and my wife pulls me in, we meet some of the couples for coffee, we talk, she, we record prayers, we send out to them, um, the ones who are willing to, to walk, walk this journey, we take them through the journey, mm -hmm. you know, and it's brought so much healing to, um, to that's, different that's people. Amazing, and I think yeah. it's also a way of, to honor our late daughters, uh, you know, because even some of these people we don't charge at all, like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, I just reach as just... It's also healing for me. I took a break when I got pregnant now with our last child uh, because it was a very tough pregnancy and it was triggering me. But, um, you know, now I'm back because I've been working with a few ladies. Mm. Yeah, but I think some of the, before we close, before so, some of the practical things, if you're going through this, I'm so sorry when you're going through this, but if you are, number one is grieve together, mm. please. What does your person, what brings healing to them? For Pete, it was long drives. It was uh, going for a coffee. A movie. I don't enjoy such things, but I had to put myself in his world to help him in his healing. I didn't tell him where Jibambe. For me, it's um, I love general cleaning, like getting down there, you know. Yeah. So our nanny and our son had gone, and I remember one of the days I told Pete, "Aki, this house doesn't look clean to me. It doesn't feel, you know, because we had have been having many guests. It was just a lot happening." And one day he told me, Sawa, tell me, he put on his shorts, we scrubbed that house, and I remember feeling so much love for him and so much, it brought so much healing because, you know, I even changed the beddings in our bed, the beddings in my son's room. Like, I just felt, it just felt healing, you know? And just put yourself in, in his journey of healing, even him in your journey of healing. Another practical thing to do is um, cling to each other. Yeah, that will really, really help you. I'm forgetting the other point. Mm. But yeah, just some of the practical things. Yeah. And, and yeah. Don't, don't fear. Don't fear. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And allow other people to pray over you, even if you can't pray. That's the time I started remembering the scriptures I learned in Primo. Mm. Those scriptures are the ones that are coming now because wow. I couldn't pray. Wow. Um, those memory verses I learned, everything that mm. I've read, they started coming to me to me, to me. So one of the ways, uh, now God, when he was restoring us, he found that we were pregnant, we had clung to one verse. That's another practical thing. Look for one verse of the Bible, cling to it, shikile your scripture. And for us, it was that one for when the Lord returned the captivity of Zion. Mm. It felt like a dream, too good to be wow. true. And that's wow. our story. And that's why we named our second, our third son, our third child, that's why we named him Zion. Because yeah. the Lord returned our captivity too good to be true. Wow. You'll be the talk of nations. And that wow. has been our journey. God restored, restored us in such a way, Pastor Don, like we conceive like a joke now. Like I look at him in the eye like this. I'm pregnant. So uh, there's a way, you know? So, is that why you've been looking at him? <laughs> oh, oh. It ain't happening. <laughs> I'm avoiding it. It ain't him, happening. You know? yeah. and, and you know, the pregnancies are quite easy. You know, the <laughs> delivery. So God restored us in a way Amen. that... I mean, we don't even sometimes yeah. believe it's us. Yeah. 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 Situs yeah. Poshikilo, we can even have 10.
please, guys, <laughs> you're producing some good babies, please. It's, it's, yeah. it's just finished. It's a wrap. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it is well. finished. So, so those three things done. And, and we're in a good space. God restores. We'll cry yeah. once in a while. Yeah. Yes. This is the first time I think we've shared this in detail like this. Yes. Um, For both and of us. God is still on the throne. Yeah. He's always on the throne. Yeah. He's a good God. Nothing has changed. What we call death on this side, from his perspective, is just a transition because it's not death. Wow. Because people transition to, to, to eternal life. Wow. You know, and it's just yeah. a perspective thing. Yeah. And so we had to learn how to look at things from his lens, not from our lens. Yeah. Um, here, it's six feet under to heaven. It's a saint being welcome. You know, it's wow. life. So the, the, it's not death. Death where is your sting. You know, mm. you've lost your sting. Mm. And so we've learned how to find joy. And the other thing that happened is because we felt we hit rock bottom, nothing moves us nowadays yeah you're stronger we are like ah, bring it on like what, what else is there you've been to... told your daughter is dead like nothing yeah, what like else there's no much. other bad news right wow. now that can keep us down wow. we're like we've we've wow. hit rock bottom wow. and and we're in a place where we are finding joy so Amen. facing adversity building resilience and finding joy Amen. that Amen. is a story your story is so moving and That's i know there are so many people who are watching today saying, you know what, if you can do that for them, mm. you can do it for us. Yeah. Amen. Um, I just want you both just mm. to take a moment and just kind of look into that camera mm -hmm. and speak to someone who's going through such pain right now. Mm. They don't want to hear practical examples. They mm. don't. Mm. They're saying, give me a word I can cling on to mm. today, mm. just for today. Mm. Pastor Pete. Yeah, if, if you're going through a difficult time right now, um, it might not be similar to what my wife and I have gone through, um, but there's a scripture I'd want to give you. The Bible says that God is close to the brokenhearted. If there's a promise he has made is that he is extra close to the ones whose heart is broken. And so you might not feel it, you might not sense it, but just know that he is close. The other thing he has promised that is that he is a present help in time of need. It might not make sense right now, but God is with you, holding your hand, walking with you, uplifting you, speaking life to you. God is there with you because he has been through every kind of adversity, uh, of course, through Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses because he was tested in every way. Um, the comfort I find is that even God himself lost his son. His wow. son wow. had to go through adversity. Mm -hmm. And if he went through it and overcame it, mm -hmm. then I have the comfort to know that he's able to carry me through mm -hmm. and carry you through and speak life to you. And you will get to the other end. And I pray and hope when you do that, Come and give a testimony. Mm. Share what the Lord has done. Mm. So he is close to you. If you're broken hearted, he's there with you. Wow. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Julie, speak to a lady out there who's saying, I just need to feel a hug mm. from you. Mm. One of the healing points in my life, I've had several of that. One of them was, there's a time I was, I walked away from home. Um, nobody knew I had gone and I went and sat, sat in an open field and I was just lamenting to God and I was like Mimi you don't know me you don't love me you don't care for me and I had this almost like a vision of God next to me or Jesus and he was crying and he was like I feel your pain I am here with you I'm sorry this happened to you and that started changing the way I was looking at God he stopped being a bully because I felt like he was a bully. But he felt like he's there with me. And there's a scripture that says he collects our tears in a jar. So none of those tears you've been crying is being wasted. And I've seen God wipe my tears. I've seen God teaching me that he loves me. He has good plans for me. And he's a good father. And a good father will cry with you. Like now if my sons, any of them gets hurt or something, I'll sit with them, wipe their tears, and I want to make them feel better so he has good plans for you and for us you've seen him restore us not just with other children because now we have like a bunch of children <laughs> but we've seen him even restore our joy our hope our outlook of life 
like we we are so hopeful that was something that was completely snatched from us and i know that can be your story too so it's not over i know it feels that way but it's not over god has really 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 good plans for you and something that i can tell you you can do is plead your case to god take take your evidence to him and tell him the courts of heaven the bible says if you're a good and faithful you shall eat the good of the land um what's that scripture yeah yes the good uh, if you're willing and even obedient, you're willing and obedient shall, shall eat, eat the, the good, good of the, the land, land. Mm -hmm. tell god i've been willing i've been obedient i shall i i have to eat the good of the land mm -hmm. me i pled my case and i told god rewrite my story mm -hmm. mine shall not be of tears mm -hmm. and god has done it for us yeah. amen mm -hmm. wow ladies and gentlemen you heard it here first loss adversity recovery mm -hmm. and coming into a place where now it's such a powerful ministry that these two are running right now mm -hmm. i don't know what pain you may be going through mm -hmm. i don't know what suffering you may be going through right now but just take a moment and think is there a bigger picture to this thing that i am going through these folks are ready and willing to help reach out to them write on the comments say something you may know of someone who's suffering right now just forward this video over to them and just tell them you know what listen to this it might help somebody mm -hmm. thank you so much for tuning in today i believe someone's life has been changed and someone's destiny has been shaken again you stay tuned right here and i'll tell you there'll be more coming pastor pete and julie asanteni sana thank, thank you for joining us and thank you for sharing thank and opening you. up um mm -hmm your lives to us mm. and to the millions who are going to listen to this mm. in Jesus name. Asante. Amen. Until next time. Amen. Asante. Bye-bye. <laughs>